Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, June 7th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. Peace on the left, peace on the right. Let's go. Atheist? You're going to overcome? Is that it? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our guests today are J.W. Kennedy. I say hi. And Dread Pirate Higgs. Oh. Arr. Hello. Arr. Digital this Free guy. Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Larry, your arm's the, gone. Oh, first I was I was worried for a second. Oh my gosh. It's a microphone. There you go. Anyway, if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and you can learn how to join them right after the mid-show breaks. We'll give you more information. Also, did you know that there's been a streaming atheist call-in video slash TV show in Knoxville for like 10 years now? Did you know that one back? I, 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 we're going to talk about it today. I didn't even know you knew about this. So yeah, yeah. I got invited yeah. for a debate and it was with this, uh, did you? you know, really avid Christian and we're going to be talking about it. I'm really glad oh, you cool. follow my stuff. I didn't even know you knew about my YouTube channel. So that, yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, no, it's a separate what? channel. Oh, <laughs> it's a separate one. Bad. Ego it's check. Called, oh, it, it it's the different uh, atheist groups in Knoxville getting together and putting, they're calling it the a free Thought United Coalition of Knoxville. Cool. So we'll tell you more about how you can watch that after the mid-show break as well. And if you'd like to interact with this show, go to Facebook and search for our digital Free Thought Radio Hour page. Use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. And you can also email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. So our topic today, uh, J.W., you want to bring it in? or Yeah. Well, um, I, I kind of put on the spot here. I, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know I was going to be the one presenting the topic. Yeah, you're under the big thumb of authority then no, on. It's Christian <laughs> privilege. We were talking about it a little earlier, but oh, yeah. I know you had a That's migraine. Right. Could have. That's could've right. That's right. On your mind. Anyway, uh, so. Uh, my thoughts on Christian privilege? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I think uh, I've, I've been watching these debates that have been sent to me by um, a, uh, a, a friend of mine who's actually almost about to be an Anglican priest. We have some interesting conversations from time to time, <laughs> a little heated sometimes, um, but always civil. Um, he's been sending me these videos of people that are just claiming that there's one, there's one debate or discussion that said, is uh, humanism Christianity light? And L I T E, you know, like it, like right, that. Right, sure. Like, like, is it Christianity yeah. light? And the basically the argument was that our morality as atheist humanists, at least in America, comes from Christianity, and we don't attribute it to Christianity as much as we should. Sure. And it's there, just, are, there are no morals on, on earth before Christianity. So right. That that's makes painful. Sense. Yeah, it's just uh, I I think I think that's kind of right up the alley of Christian privilege. Like we think that this the this thing that we call Christianity is a lot. I mean, at least a lot of Protestants think that it is what it is today. And what's taught today was what was taught back then. And there's this truth that just, you know, sure. carries throughout <laughs> the ages. That's always been the same and it never changes. And, and, you know, Christianity can't, you know, can't, can't attribute any of its um, philosophies to any other religion. It stands on its own. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. You know, so <laughs> I think that that's on my mind when I think about Christian privilege. It's just like, do you, I don't think you understand how this works, how philosophy works, how morality works, how biological capacity for optimism works, capacity for um, the preservation of life. It's just like, my question would be like, well, okay, how do you explain morality existing in the wild before we even had civilization. Like, how do you how do you explain a, a mother protecting her young, or yeah. the occasional father standing and staying with his family and 
um, and the tribes defending themselves and others and two tribes um, having diplomacy and agreements and deciding not to be violent. Right. These, these kind of occasions, it's just like, well, do we attribute that to Christianity? I was like, oh, no, the Holy Spirit was there showing them the way. They just didn't have writing, you know. I don't know, man. That's my soapbox on that. That's a good yeah. answer. Mm -hmm. Well, the, like there's no such thing as human compassion or empathy before Christianity came. Oh, yeah. Well, um, Holy Ghost, I guess. And Jesus came to America to 400 years before uh, Columbus did. Hey, leave the, Mormons the alone. Mormonism. Leave the Mormons alone. Leave them alone. <laughs> Gary, what do you think about this? You think there's um, a privilege for specifically Christians or any other kind of religion? Absolutely. And uh, uh, to uh, as a proof of that is my most recent submission to uh, the Supreme Court um, in defense of the Pastafarian's right to expression. Um, and the and the battle I've been. I mean, I'm talking the Human Rights Tribunal. Um, saying, ah, you guys just mock everyone and we don't care about you, so go away. Um, if I were a Christian and I had some issue with ICBC, um, I'm, I'm almost 99% uh, certain that, uh, you know, they take up the cause. So here I am having to, you know, go through the Supreme Court of Canada to have my uh, rights defended. And just as a background, this is so that you can take a picture with like the religious symbology of Pasifarians on That's your hat correct. on a government ID. And yep. it turns out the case that that ID or that item is just a colander on your head, which isn't like harmful in any way. But if you're a Hindu, you can wear a turban. If you're a Christian, you can wear a cross or a metal hat. But you can't wear the colanders as determined or, or by a tricorn. Or, yeah. Or, or try, <laughs> yeah. which is even it, cooler. But, yeah. but this is interesting because um, I have a firearms possession license, which is a federal um, license, mm -hmm. and they allowed me to have my uh, tricorn in there um, because I simply said, "This is my faith. This is my expression," and they didn't argue about it. They just said, "Oh, okay," and they yeah. let me do it. I'm also a, a marriage commissioner here in British Columbia. And that piece of ID also um, has me wearing my tricorn as well. Again, no argument. You know, Very so cool. where, you know, what the policies or whatever their protocols are should be applied evenly and undiscriminatively, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Later, I'm going to throw this one out at you too before we uh, roll into my thing. What do you think about um, religious privilege in general? Do you think it's... I'll throw this one out. Here's a modified question. Do you think it's Christians privilege specifically or whatever is the most popular religion in that geopolitical area privilege? Well, I, I think that that that's the case, you know, which if you have a, a society that's based on Muslim or Islam, uh, they're going to have the privilege, uh, Hinduism in India, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it, but in America, it's Christianity, and, and specifically in South America, it's Catholicism. Um, it, they just have the privilege. It's recognized by the government. They have uh, they recognize and invite their officials to their meetings to uh, solemnize it. Um, and uh, we know from personal experience here in Knoxville and in this area that when we try to send somebody to uh, solemnize a, a governmental meeting, uh, they give us all kinds of problems. And one time they literally walked out on the invocation that we were given. Um, it's it's uh, discrimination and it's illegal. And we eventually made that case and were able to uh, do an invocation. But it's not only there. It's in the laws that they write, the uh, blue laws that they enact. Uh, you can't buy a tool on Sunday because there's no work on Sunday. You can't buy beer or liquor in many um, counties in Tennessee and in other southern counties, uh, southern states, simply because of the religious privilege of the religious right wants you to live under their strictures. Yeah, and we're living in a time where we're actually seeing the result of unchecked powers continuing to, right. you know, indeed, hold people down or unfairly, unjustly, and without any form of accountability whatsoever. And yeah. this is the sort of thing that will continue to expand, become a worse problem until we speak up about it. And mm -hmm. that's why I thought it was a good idea to like bring it up in this show. Well, let's let's talk about this particular thing uh, that we saw this week. Uh, sure. Trump uh, spraying tear gas and running people off the street. Peaceful protesters. 
<laughs> I want to just to that. walk over to a nearby church and hold up a Bible. Okay. Can we you imagine? Can you okay. imagine uh, yeah. like a, a mayor who is is Muslim uh, doing that to a peaceful crowd in the name of Islam and walking over to a mosque and holding up a Quran? Right. right. It would never fly. That would be it. It would, would never fly. It. Yeah. That's Christian privilege and, and right there. This, right. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. There's this viral meme going about with people that uh, stand up holding a book that they've never read in yes. front of a building that they've never been to. Pastafarians are doing that too. <laughs> Pastafarians. they never yeah. read, standing in front of a building they've never been to. They right. never go to on a regular basis. Anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, and the weird thing is, it's not even, so like from my perspective, I'm sure a lot of people share my perspective too, but um, this is not a new thing, but I'm glad that we are, it, 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 it's a thing that comes in waves as far as like unrest about it. And I'm glad that this is like one of the highest crescendos of unrest because maybe this will help to, to not make it normal anymore because I need, we need people to realize like, Hey, we got, you know, people who are representing us that aren't representing us. We have people that have powers over us that maybe should at least be accountable for that. And the powers that are being distributed aren't being distributed fairly. Most in the case with like, you know, Gary's talking about um, his, his ability to express himself religiously without causing harm to anybody or, you know, Larry's ability to just have an invocation that fairly represents everyone in the community. Like each of us have something to bring to the table where it's, you know, if you're a marginalized group, it's very easy for people in position of power to not give you any, you know, time of day. And that's not fair. And so we're talking about privilege today. I wanted to talk about an interview that I had last week. Um, I don't know if I guys told, I did tell you about it. I had it on video. The last video that I had, I said, after our talk today, we were going to do, I was going to go do a quasi debate with a Christian. I'm not sure if he was a pastor or anything like that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to uh, uh, demonize anybody. So the idea is um, I want to give just a quick little background story on like what happened. So we met at NanoCon. I'm going to share my screen. This is a person I met at NanoCon. His name was Pedro. Cool dude. He said on t- over Twitter, hey, do you want to do an interview with me? And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, let's do an interview because I did an interview with him and it was fun. Uh, this is my this is guy, Pedro, right here. And uh, – I'll show you this. Here's an email exchange that we have. This is me getting back to him after Twitter. And I was like, hey, yo, 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 let's do the uh, interview. And he's like, hey, thanks for the email. Um, Basically, I want to do a a conversation with you. Let's make the topic, does God exist? And I was, and I said, you know, I don't want to talk about God existing because the issue with that is it, it gives the implication, if you're talking with a Christian, that there's only two sides of an argument, whether or not a God, Christian God exists, or if if atheism is right, which I feel like biases the conversation because there's so many different genres of Christianity and atheism is not even an answer to the question on whether or not God exists. It's just a question of, do you believe in this God or not? And so I said, Hey, if you are an atheist, it might be cool to have just an atheist versus atheist debate on this topic, because that'd be kind of cool. And if any of you guys want to talk about like, does a God exist as an atheist? We might, we might agree on the idea of that we don't believe in the God, but we might have some really cool, interesting, nuanced, you know, things, points of view that we want to throw out. And I don't think that's sh- sure. shared enough on the internet. <clears throat> Whereas I would love to see a Christian debate another Christian on whether or not a God exists, because that will actually show that a lot of things Christians as a, as a group uh, believe they agree on unanimously aren't the fact. And so I was like, hey, Christian, Christian, or an atheist, an atheist, but uh i'm not really interested in this i don't think atheism answers whether or not a god exists in the first place it'd be nice to really dive deep in this topic if you're an atheist yourself then we can have atheist versus atheist does a god exist he says no i'm actually a follower of christ i was like oh <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we were talking about that last show it's like spoiler alert mm-hmm. yeah 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 so i'm like what does follower of christ mean that is like the most oh i didn't want to say that in my head but like in my head that's the most generic form of christian that I can think of at this point, but still, 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 still. I mean, like that is what the textbook definition of general Christian. So uh, he really didn't want to talk about whether or not a God exists. So I said, Hey, listen, um, if you make the talk strictly about atheism, especially as a former atheist, because he did qualify himself as a former atheist, I think it'd be really interesting to have the conversation former and current atheists talk about atheism. Cause I, I don't want to spend time 
and I say this in the email, I don't want to spend time talking about the capital G God that you really, really are a big fan of. I think, you know, like I think I say here, I feel like otherwise to start an honest discussion on whether or not a God exists and then focusing the talk on any specific God claim stacks the deck too much in favor of that particular God claim. And I made the example. It's like, it's sort of like being invited to talk about your favorite sports team, so long as it's the 1998 Oakland Raiders, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and I was like, my issue isn't even with the roster. I'm just not a dude that worships Desmond Howard. <laughs> so I'm being cheeky here. And he's like, no, 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 that's great. We can do former and current atheists talk about atheism. I love it. P.S. I don't love it. <laughs> 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 but I was like, okay, great. So we are agreeing that as a former atheist and me as a current atheist, and we're going to be talking strictly about atheism, please don't preach at me, uh, basically. And here's like more of my explanation about like, listen, I just don't, I'm not interested. I'm happy to talk about gods in the future, but I don't want to ta- have an in-depth conversation about anyone's capital G God, given that each person necessarily is pointing at a different personalized capital G God that they necessarily have a personalized relationship with. Like if you have a personal relationship with God, your personal G God might be different from someone else's. And I, I'm not here to talk about the God claim conclusion. I want to know about how you arrived at the conclusion. Like that's my whole thing. Like what's the reasoning that you used to re- reach that conclusion. If the reasoning is good, I'll believe whatever the conclusion is, but I'm not here to talk about the God and the chapters and all that stuff. And he's like, okay, we're all good to go. I'm like, sounds like a plan. And I can tell you, this was a fun, this was a fun conversation because Larry even warned me and I was like, yeah, yeah, I know what's going to happen too. <laughs> I'll break the talk into three parts. Uh, I'm, we're only going to go to the most interesting one, which is at the very end. So talk part one, it was like a lot of flattery. It was really nice. It's like, Hey man, you're really amazing. You really are amazing. I love your channel. It's so good. I was like, great. Part two, what's atheism, right? Oh, and the second part was, or a third part was, thank you for telling me about atheism. Yay. Then at the very, very last five minutes, there's the surprise over time. <laughs> over time where it's like, let me tell you about God. <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, God. About, yeah. Let me tell you about God. Yeah. My capital G God. Yeah, let like me, you wouldn't me. know man, being right. a former Christian. Right. Right. Oh, well, man, that would have been a big deal. But um, basically, it's like the conversation immediately transfers into, let me tell you about my worldview. This is about my God. And I'm not preaching at you, but let's start with the book of Job. And then we'll go into the book of Ecclesiastes and I'll go over some of my favorite quotes. It's very interesting. I'd love to share this conversation with you. And here's the premise that I want to make. My whole philosophy, especially with my street epistemology background and all that stuff is, I believe I can talk to anyone about anything there's a manner of how you have those kinds of conversations. And one of the biggest things about having those conversations is consent. And you'll see a lot of times when Gary does this, when I do this, when Larry does this, is that when we have a conversation with someone, we, we settle on a topic and then we ask, is it cool if we talk about this for, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, or like, can we talk about this? Can I record this conversation? Would you mind if I post it? There's always a a back and forth exchange and it's never formatted in the sense of, and now I would like to talk about my worldview, blah, 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 blah. Now we're going to talk about Ecclesiastes, blah, blah, blah. It's like, hold, hold, hold up. I'm, there's two people in this conversation and we both need to be on the same page or at least consenting to have yeah. the conversation that's being thrown out. Yeah, I'd ask him if he's going to pass the plate. <laughs> <laughs> that's so a surprise, me... surprise over time. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, can you guys see my screen? Is there anything blocking the way? Yeah. Is there anything blocking the view? Good. All right, so I think this is the part where he, he does mention that we are going to be talking about atheism. So before uh, we go to the topic today, which is former and current atheists talk about atheism, yeah. I just would like to say... Right, right? Atheism. We're going to be talking about atheism. I'm skipping all the way. The first, you know, the first three-thirds of this are actually really good, and I'm going to be posting that on my channel as well as my Patreon, so you're free to check that out. But what I want to get to is the interesting part where I start dying on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> so we can all die on the inside. I, I speak up for myself. And this is the part, mm-hmm. this is why I want to share it with you. Cause there's a lot of times where I'm like, no, you agree to talk about this. We're talking about this. And I want to know feedback from you guys. Am I being too harsh? Is this fair? Stuff like that. And I'll, and, mm-hmm. and feel free to say pause anytime. I'm looking for the part where the conversation transitions and I'm looking for when he starts going from smiles to like, <laughs> well, so I'm just, I, I, it just puzzles me a little bit. Uh, look at the facts that some people might think that just not knowing 
uh, could be, uh, you know, a bad thing. In fact, and now, Ty, I actually want to talk a little bit about God, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember, we were talking about atheism, and this is like the literally opposite of the thing that we agreed to talk on. So like, it was like atheism, 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 atheism. Let's talk about he God. To like, save you, man. He can't get, get miss up on an opportunity to save your soul. That would be. I know, I know, I know. He, I'm not, and that's the thing. It's like I know he's coming from like a good place, but it's also a cheater. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a cheating perspective. Taking it advantage of your goodwill. Yeah, and I also feel like it implies we get to the part where we soon get to the part where it's like. I want to tell you these Bible verses. Like, I don't want to hear these Bible verses. Like, well, we just had a conversation about atheism. You should now listen to my Bible verses. Like, no, you agreed to have a conversation about atheism. Now you're exhibiting like the privilege of, you know, like oh, this Christian idea that now that you say something Christian related, I have to listen to it. And that's not what I'm about. You're literally talking to the one person or maybe the one small group of people that don't want to hear that stuff that you want to say. So We've have heard my it consent a thousand person. times. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I believe it or not, I know what the Bible has in it. All right, anyway, um, just don't well, preach at me. Yes, I'm not going to. <laughs> not, okay. not at all. all so right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about my the my uh, worldview. Okay, I'm just going to talk about this just a little bit. Okay. So for and I think from for, here it would have been a lot better if the question was formatted. Would you mind if I talk about my worldview rather than I'm going to talk about my worldview? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. the biggest distinction and that takes you towards more sc versus just let me preach at you or just let me say things at you and deal with it you know yeah. and if you don't like it too bad you're going to hell right <laughs> what can I say? it's very unprofessional for for a christian and i know and i'm 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 very open to hear all that yes just one thing if you were a hindu if you were a jehovah witness if you believed in thor I wouldn't care about the God that you believe in. I'm yeah. only interested truly about the manner of how you are able to substantiate the claim yeah. through, through whatever reasoning process you use. Like, I just want to know the reasoning process because if it's a reasonable reasoning process, I'll believe in whatever God is at the end of that tunnel too. Mm. But if you tell me, if for example, you spend the next 20 minutes telling me about like, I was raised here, this terrible thing happened to me, and then I had an awakening, and this God just really shown me. It's like, that's great. What's the re what is the reasoning that you used to get to that God claim? Because mm. stories from tradition don't really move me. I've, I, can t I have documented channels of me having these kinds of conversation. <laughs> do you have a, do you have, it sounds like I'm not convinced and you are convinced. I understand what you're convinced in. How did you become convinced? Okay, so um, first of all, <laughs> First of all, I can see how you have had many conversations about this and you're just kind of structuring the conversation before it happens because you have had it many times. I've had it many times and we only have like five minutes left. In this <laughs> oh, I understand. No. Well, just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let me just no. tell you about my God belief while we got fun. I was like, oh my God. No, actually, Ty, uh, let's, do, <laughs> let's do something. Let's do something because I think that was... A and I'm trying to play it light. and <laughs> Nicely, like I, Nicely I'm, done. I'm trying to hint like, hey, this isn't cool. Do this at this last stage. And I'm also just trying to say like, hey, if you want to format the conversation where you can talk about God belief, at least just tell me what convinced you first. And maybe down the road we can get to that. But we have five minutes. If you want to do like a quick little chat SC style or at least figure out what your epistemology is, just tell me what convinced you about the God belief. And that starts, I feel like, the, the escalation of, well, you're not letting me talk it's about what the thing I want. It's like, you, you don't have my consent to talk about the thing you want. You invited me to talk about this thing that we both mm -hmm. wanted. Mm -hmm. We're on a show well, together. A salesman has to control the conversation. That's one of the <laughs> things when I was in sales. Like, well, oh, really? Really pitching yep. it. You know, you have to control the conversation. You have to control the conversation in order to persuade the person in order to be believe that they need to buy what, that, what um, they are selling you. So I I began to rec once I what became not religious anymore I began to recognize these same tactics in um, apologists and evangelicals and pastors and just common religious people. Mm. Larry, I want to shake up the format real quick before we get into the more heated parts of this talk. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you mind if we did the 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 break and then the news after this video explanation? No, that's fine. Cool. 
So why don't you take us out real quick and we will be literally right here. (laughs) Okay. Uh, This is uh, WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM live right here in Knoxville, Tennessee this Sunday morning, um, June 7th. It's about 1130 a.m. Nice. Uh, And uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour 103.9 FM. Simply the best. Okay, Mm -hmm. cool. Let's get back to this video we're about to wrap up. So we're getting to the part where uh, uh, this is an interview that I had with uh, uh, a Christian. Now, am I gonna, <clears throat> you're going to finish the video, and then I'm going to give the Exactly. The news. Okay. Yeah, and I think I'll be done maybe about five minutes. Maybe, right. yeah, That's fine. Eight minutes. Yeah. That is a beautiful Let's question. See. What I was trying yeah. to do before, uh, uh, before answering your question, I don't know. Sure. Perhaps we can do this another time. Sure. What yeah. I wanted to do is not convince you that God exists. I just I want, want you to tell me what convinced you, and I'll leave it whether or not it convinces me on, as a, my follow-up question. But okay. If you can concisely tell me what convinced you in a God. Like I said, I have these conversations in five minutes anyway. Okay. What convinced you that a God was real? What convinced you that a God is real? Let's get straight to the point. Okay. Well, before going there, I, I, uh, I really want to actually make the, just say uh, just the say point it. about not knowing how important that is for me as a follower of Christ too. And I know that as soon as I, as I say, so before we go to the place, I really don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm By being the way, jacked. Yeah, you also hear a lot of times, I'm not preaching at you, but God would love to have a relationship <laughs> <Yep>. with you. <laughs> follower of Christ. There is a whole myriad of questions that come, that come. Yeah, I always wonder. You. You're sitting down. You haven't moved anywhere. Is is Christ not moving either? Like, <laughs> who are you really following, really? Huh? There you go. That is yeah. uh, that is an analytic perspective about missions and linguistics. But let's let me tell you about why. Uh, I'm not preaching. I'm just talking about my worldview because you yeah. were talking about the not knowing. Yeah, and uh, you want to know the reasoning. Actually, I didn't pursue that. I wanted to know also the reasoning why you actually describe best models in order to describe reality. And when it comes to reality, you don't think that reality might be. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's fair to say important. I don't know if you would say it that way, but it might be overrated. Might be. Yeah. Might be what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, so overrated. So yeah, that is kind of a reasoning that would. So. Uh, he got caught up on the idea that I said, like, reality might be overrated. Not saying that it's useless. It's that science is not about giving you reality. It's about coming up with a model to explain how reality works. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that pursuit is really useful because it allows us to apply it to things that might be objectively true or things that may not be, like, you know, video games or Google Maps, which uses a flat Earth model. It's just a flat 2D map. It doesn't predict the curvature of the earth when you go from here to McDonald's because it's more useful to just say point A, point B, it's going to be about seven miles. Right. And like, as long as it's a useful model, we can, we can get some really useful data out of it. And the difference between the usefulness and the, and the objective truth of it could be nominal. So to that point, the objective reality could be slightly overrated, but we at least have this really useful way to like do stuff and and like interact with people and come up with models of reality. He hooked on that and he was like, okay, so if you don't know, if you think reality is overrated, let me tell you what isn't overrated. (laughs) Overrated. God. And if you don't know, and I know that I don't have the thought process of atheists doesn't know what objective reality is. Therefore uh, Christians do because we have the one true compass, which is God let me tell you about this other model that you could use and follow. And we got caught up on that a little bit. I'll get to the point where he introduces the book of Job and, and then skip past that. Cause I'm, I'm just politely waiting through him to be done. And then when he's done with the book of Job, he goes into Ecclesiastes. I'm like, we got to stop. <laughs> this is Take not cool. Thing. Okay. So I would like to know that as well, because if not, if I, if I would stay with the definition of your definition of science and how it kind of, it, it kind of leads to thinking that uh, reality is overrated. I wouldn't believe uh, either the way you talk about science. Yeah, and I mean that in a cheeky way. It's sort of like the pursuit of trying to figure out what your first kiss felt like. It's just like, yes. but if you build a machine, like a time machine, to figure out what your first kiss is like, I'm like way more interested in the time machine than that stupid moment in high school yeah. where you kiss <laughs> Michelle Andrews who had like braces and you cracked teeth because you, you forgot about that because of nostalgia, but you build a time machine. That's way more interesting. So yeah, yeah you learned your first kiss, but like this is overrated compared to the time machine. Like the pursuit of science is always going to be something more interested than these facile moments and that we're stringing together and calling 
present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to say is that in, in, in my worldview, when it comes to not knowing, that is actually something that in our, our state of being, as it as it is described biblically, and I know that I'm saying many things that would call would just. Uh, uh, bring forth many questions but just hear me what i want to say about the the fact that i think that not knowing is actually our nature is there are two moments i'm not preaching i'm just talking about my worldview here um there are two moments in the bible that are beautiful for me and for many people which is first of all we have the book of job uh, allegedly the, the the oldest book in the bible where job is asking for 37 chapters the reasoning why something so evil has happened to him he's not up to 38 and when it comes to god as answering this question god actually doesn't answer the question god does is to to wide to widen the perspective of job of job right he says you're thinking about this but what about this that you know you need this in order for that to happen you need this and you so need this. i'm skipping past this it's it's pretty long and i'm being polite listening through it but his idea is that the book of Job is like an example of a guy who doesn't know, but the real answer is because God does exist and he's just testing, which in my opinion is like one of the grossest examples of like the behavior of a deity that's supposed to be benevolent right. to right. pick on his own followers. Larry, you want to yeah. follow up on that? Because I know you got some beef on this. So. And, then oh, mock, uh, yes. and then mock them for questioning. Like you, you, if you, like, how dare you even mm -hmm. ask the question? That's yeah. kind of how he treated Job. Yeah. Like, who and the he, heck? And, and many He's literally hanging out with that, the devil. Yeah. For the, think that God killed his family and his children and all that stuff and then gave them back to him. No, not the same one. Over. Just more that's, women. That's my point. They gave him a new wife, a new family, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he still lost his original uh, wife and family mm -hmm. and property yeah. and all that good stuff. And it was all due to a bet with Satan. So God exactly. Satan were just playing with the lives of his followers, yeah. especially his true believers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a terrible story. It's a really, really rough story to pull anything beautiful from. And right. it speaks to how into the Kool Aid <clears throat> we're already in. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Right. Hey Boudreau, welcome. It's good to see you. It's and you're see muted. You. Hey, Boudreau, hey guys. You hey yeah. Boudreau, welcome. Just as I was quick, Oh, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, when you guys threw me off when I joined, I, I saw two ties and I was like, <gasps> the cloning worked. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Finally, there's no with me. Uh, so this is the debate that I had last week with uh, Christian. Uh, I didn't want to have a conversation about Christianity. He said he was a former atheist. So I was like, Let, hey, current atheist, former atheist, let's talk about atheism. And we did for like 55 minutes. And then at the last five minutes, he's like, let me tell you about God. And I was like, did you ask me if I want to talk about God? Because I've made it explicitly clear in emails and Twitter. I don't want to have a conversation about God. I want to have a conversation about atheism. He's like, well, you talked about atheism for 55 minutes. Let's talk about God. And I was like, no, you invited me to a conversation about atheism. Mm -hmm. You don't have my consent to talk about God. If you want to have that conversation, at least tell me what convinced you. But don't just start preaching at me. And he's like, okay, fine. I won't preach at you. But the beautiful book of Job yeah. is where I'd like to begin. <laughs> and, then, and you can see my face right now. It's like, <laughs> oh, no, here we go. And he's already lost. He's already lost in it. So let me um, skip a wee bit forward. I think there's a point where it's like, <laughs> this is a lot longer than I expected. Sorry about this, Larry. Let's say I'm aware of the story. What does it mean to you? Okay, so this is one point, and I'll finish the other one, and then there's a beautiful verse in it. Gary, you might like that as an approach. Um, I would say it a little more politely because I'm a bit, you know, drawn out. But like when someone starts to say, like, I have this 14 long chapter recital that I want to give you, it's like, okay, I understand, but what does that mean to you? What does it speak to your heart, depending on what right. you're talking to? It's a good yeah. way to get past memorization. Regurgitation. Especially, and I think you're referring to the chat I had with the two elders. Mm, yeah, where are the exactly. story? What does it mean to you? Okay, so this is one point, and I'll finish the other one. And then there's a beautiful verse in Ecclesiastes that goes, "I believe you." But what does it mean to you? <laughs> so, let, but let me let me let me say the what the, what the okay. verse goes. Do you realize it's not like you're talking to a person who hasn't read the Bible? It's right. that I just don't want to sit and and go over Bible verses. Why don't you just tell me what it means to you? Because at okay. least that's the interesting part of the conversation for two people who are talking to each other. Does that make sense? It doesn't. Why? Why doesn't it that doesn't. make sense? <laughs> like, why doesn't that make sense? Why can't I just tell you Bible verses right now? Like, aren't you a person that loves Bible verses? Like, no. Like, I'm literally not that person. And you invited me to have a conversation about not that. How does it not make sense to you? Anyway, mm -hmm. why? Okay. Why would that make sense for me? There is a multitude of people in the world, 
billions of people who would love to talk with the Bible about you and you have direct access in your mind yeah. to an all powerful being that you believe in who would love to talk to you as much as you want. But yeah. unlike those conversations, I'm not asking you for 10% of your paycheck and I'm actually listening to you. Yeah. So you're talking to a human being that has a, a, a moral <laughs> short period of time. And you know, my time is valuable. And I'm, and I, I think I've made it clearly ahead of time that I don't want to talk about Bible verses. Mm -hmm. I want to know what they mean to you. If yeah. you can't get there, maybe we can set this up as a different time, but this isn't the conversation I signed up for. So again, I'm opening up the window and I'm still staking my ground because mm -hmm. there is that Boudreaux, the idea of the show is like Christian privilege. Like I'm not just going to sit here and, and have you recite Bible verses at me or preach at me. And at the end of his like Job talk, he was like, and let me tell you how beautiful God is. Listen, it was just the idea that, you know, Job didn't understand. It's like, that's a terrible story. I'm not going to say anything. Now, when he moves into Ecclesiastes, like, I can't take this anymore. Like, I have to speak up. And so I think it's worthwhile that if you are an atheist, don't, don't be passive when, you know, mm -hmm. Christian privilege is being pushed on you. It's okay to speak up and express yourself like, hey, I don't have the, con you don't have consent to push me through this right now. Right. I think that ends this. We can talk about this later on. Bujo, what do you think? So just is anybody else distracted by the, the need to play the game of find the different things in the two pictures? Ty has a red shirt on that one and a blue shirt on that one. <laughs> I'm looking in the back. I'm looking in the back. The guitar, the guitar is still there. Isn't that the looking, easiest game? Oh, there's a guitar in the background? Where? Where? Yeah. Where? where? Oh, between ukulele. Me, right by your door. Right. Oh, between, between me and this version? I thought you meant between like this guy and this guy. I was like, it's easy because oh, no. everything's different. Oh, okay. well, that's, that's easy mode. Sorry. That's, uh, right. that was, that was, uh, that's funny. That's, funny. This is, that's really interesting, th this conversation with this guy. I yeah. got to get the beginning part. Yeah. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. And then we can get into news. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so you just don't want to talk about, we have talked about the, a little bit about the worldview of atheism. Yeah. When it comes to talking about where my, my worldview fa finds a foundation, you don't want to talk about it. No, because you invited me to a talk about atheism for 55 minutes, for an hour, really. I was not invited to a talk about your worldview. And for you to switch it around in the last step and be like, oh, well, you want to, it's like, mm -hmm. if I go out with someone to Taco Bell, right? And, and then was like, Hey, you want to go to Taco Bell? I was like, sure. I go to Taco Bell, but I got to go to work tomorrow. It's like, okay, that's cool. We go to Taco Bell, we come back. And it's like, he, when I'm ready to go to work tomorrow, he's in my car. He's like, let's go to work. It's like, you don't work where I work. What are you doing? It's like, I'll, yeah. I get to work. I get half your paycheck now. It's like, no, no, no. It's like, dude, we're married. I'm going to sleep in your bed. It's like, no, we agreed to Taco Bell. And that was it. You don't have my consent for any of this. We didn't agree yeah. on any of that. Like what part of that? But moreover, he wants you to go to his work. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah 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 well you know it's it's like the the first the whole conversation about the atheism thing is really just his extended segue into right. his his proselytizing right 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 and i'm not standing up for it also it's like if you know when people leave their religion it's a very traumatic experience a lot of times right so like if i was a soldier with ptsd right and i'm on a mm -hmm. conversation with someone who was like a former soldier or whatever and he's like, hey, let me tell you about my loudest grenade sound effect noises that I love to make yeah. with my mouth. And I'm like, <laughs> please, don't, please don't do that because that's really going to stress me out. It's like, well, I heard you talk about your, your stuff all the while. Now I want to talk about myself. It's like, no, right. dude, that's not cool. Like, you don't understand the, the, the idea of one, being a good host, two, consent, and three, the trauma that like people who actually leave Christianity or religion... <laughs> And, and end up without faith might still be dealing with. And that's like a really sensitive topic. So for you to say like, hey, I'll agree to talk to you about atheism for 55 minutes, but when I preach at you at the end and you don't want to hear it, that's your, that's your that's problem. That's more like, Christian privilege right there. That's more Christian privilege yeah. right there. Anyway, uh, let's see. I think I, that I would, I would happily talk about what convinced you that a God was real. But if okay. it wasn't that Bible verse then I don't care about it because that's not what obviously got you to your God belief. Yeah, but we were not, we were not talking about that time. We, I, was, I just wanted to make a point how Christians are in a state of being where actually we actually don't know and not knowing is a beautiful thing, but you seem not to let me finish what I'm trying to say. So perhaps, perhaps we can talk about that uh, later. Maybe but another time because we it are... Makes me, it, I'll be honest end. with you. It makes me a little sure. bit sad that... Uh, yeah. that you made him sad, Ty. 
here. Yeah, I, I think his idea is like, <laughs> hey, you're a guy that talks to anyone about anything, yet you won't let me talk about religion. I'm like, there's a method to the madness of listening to anyone talk about anything. And it's not you be quiet and let the other person vent at you. It's called street epistemology. And the very, very first rule in my book of how to do SE is keep it positive, you know? One, keep it positive. Two, make it a conversation. And then three, make, let the other person, try to let the other person think for themselves, right? And yeah. when, if you're not keeping it positive because the other person is getting uncomfortable, you're failing at any attempt to make an actual connection with another human being. Second, if you're not making a conversation, conversations go both ways necessarily. It's not just me telling you things. I'm like, here's my worldview. I'm not preaching, but I'm just going to tell you what my worldview is. I'm not trying to convince you. Just listen to me. Like, that's not a conversation. And then three, you're not letting me think. You're just let, you let me listen to you. And that's not cool. So like in all three pillars of how to do SE, this is failing. And I'm politely telling them on multiple occasions, please don't preach at me to <laughs> let's talk about this later. Three, this is what we agreed on. Please stop. <laughs> and no, I won't let you finish. So deal with that. Like, but and if you want to keep this up for five minutes fine but at this certain point our time is going to be up that's uh you don't you just don't want to hear uh, about something because if we if we all approach conversations this way then we actually we couldn't talk about i anyone. certainly wouldn't want to color the whole conversation but we did agree in text that this would be a conversation between a former an atheist and an atheist yeah. about atheism yeah and you did say at the last minute that you want to talk about god and i'm totally fine with that but my interest in god conversations isn't the holy book, the verses that you like, because if I, I really care about what it means to you mm -hmm. and you and the door's still open. If you want to talk about, this is what this verse means to me, but I don't want to sit down and talk about the 35 chapters Job wrote or this verse that you want to recite. Just tell me what it means to you. Yeah. We, we, and if we, that we, would change, if you didn't have that, what would change about you if you didn't have that verse? But yeah. That might be a better conversation for the future. I think right now maybe we should just work on disciplining ourselves on, on staying focused on what the agreed upon conversation was. And if you want to make a conversation about God in the future, I'll show up there, but I want to be honest with you. My, my point, even when I'm doing SE is not to figure out how much you love your God. It's to figure out how you came to your God conclusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, my point is not to, to challenge your God belief or challenge you personally, mm -hmm. I'm only challenging. And you have to give it to me. Like a conversation takes two people to have this. You have to give me the reasoning that you used to get through that belief. Elsewise, mm -hmm. I'm not interested in having that conversation. And then you're just forcing me to listen to you. Yeah, that's okay. not cool. Yeah, definitely. I'm not forcing you to do anything. And at the beginning of this conversation, we, we, before we press the record button, button yeah. I, I actually, we also say that sometimes conversations lead us to talk about things that uh, we go on a tangent. As, as you actually... <laughs> you actually uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's really bad. That's like a bad warning. That's like saying, hey, man... Or like going up to a girl in a bar and being like, hey, I'll buy you a drink and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. <laughs> this is the small print. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's not my fault that this conversation led to a place that you specifically <laughs> said you didn't want to go to. I, right. I feel like there's, there's like some... Somehow oh. your fault. I just can't articulate it at the present time, man. There's something poetic about the fact that he used tangent. When you think about geometry, oh, uh, religion and, and and atheism are far from tangential. You know, like yeah. I, I mean, he should have said perpendicular. That would have made mm. more sense. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, that'd be nice. Totally okay. separate. Yes, we got less than conversations. <laughs> we got like one minute left. Let's let's finish um, this up. You mentioned about yourself when you talked about uh, video games. So I think yeah. that nothing, nothing is happening here that is not fair at all. But cool. I actually wonder if uh, you not wanted to hear that just side about, not me, because I'm not important uh, Why don't anymore. you just set just up the conversation that way? We'll do it in the future and you can set up the conversation that way and I can show Definitely, up. definitely. But not this conversation because we're already out of time. Yeah. Well, uh, time. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I think that... Uh, and that was it. Listen, I'm, I, I just want to make the point clear. This isn't the first time I've had this happen to me. And in each case, I've done exactly this, where it's like, you don't have my consent to talk about this. Either stick to the thing that we agreed on, or this conversation is more or less over. We're more or less already out of time. Oh, I love it. And, I think it's great. Yeah, and I'm being great. cordial. I'm being nice. And I'm keeping well doors said. open. Mm -hmm. But I'm not here to listen to your Bible verses. I'm not here to tell you, uh, listen to about why your favorite God's your favorite God. I want to know about the things that we talked about or the things that we agreed to talk about, or at least 
your reasoning to arrive at a conclusion, not the conclusion itself. And it's not an attack on you. It's just, I want to figure out the most reasonable way to arrive at conclusions and you're not giving it to me. So what's this conversation mm -hmm. about? That's basically it. He's telling yeah. you what he believes instead of why or how he reached it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm going to be posting the full interview on my channel. You'll be able to see that. I think the very first three parts are still really good. The ones about atheism. And then it was only that last five minutes where it's like, well, you won't let me talk about Christianity. It's like, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> They're worried to anyone else who wants to have a right. <laughs> debate with me. It's like, we're going to have it on what we agreed to talk about. And that's yeah. it. I don't, yeah. Anyway. What's news? Local news. Let's do it. Well, just want to talk about the local uh, atheist groups, free thinking groups here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year with over a thousand members, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. Hmm. Uh, we also have weekly Zoom meetups. If you're interested in becoming uh, a member and getting into the Zoom meetups, uh, it's every Tuesday evening around 530. Um, just messages. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events to find out more about them. They're an older group than we are, uh, more well established. They actually have presentations and discussions where we just get together for dinner. <laughs> nice. But at the same time, we have a, a community <clears throat> as, as, as well as they do. And we many times get together and, and form coalitions. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about Knoxville Atheist Call-In TV show. Well, it's called the Free Thinkers United Coalition in Knoxville. It's online at YouTube. Just look up Free Thinkers United Coalition. We also have uh, archives of the show under Free Thought Forum Knoxville. If you want to look that up for our, other, our older TV show, it's been on the air for 10 years. So if you're interested in becoming involved with the TV or the radio show, this show, uh, come to an Ask Meetup, uh, RET meeting, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and you could be our next co-host or guest. Uh, with us on the show, we have Wombat, uh, J.W. Kennedy, Boudreaux, Dread Pirate Hicks, and um, that pretty much covers our post-break news, yeah. as it were. Boudreaux, I'd love for you to weigh in on the idea of Christian privilege. Do you think it exists? What examples have you had to impact your life? And like, maybe is there, and then maybe as a secondary level, is there such a thing as like a secular privilege that we should be concerned about? That's boy, I'm, I'm bummed. I missed the beginning of this. Now that's a neat topic. One of the things I've thought a lot about uh, as I get more and more vocal about my atheism is, um, Christ, Christians and, and other other religions, but mostly Christ, Christians, um, are 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 allowed. Like society is very very okay with them walking around with lowercase t's on their neck, um, and and kind of bragging about that their belief. Um, whereas it's a little taboo, uncomfortable for an atheist to do that, or um, and, and I guess in some societies it's probably um, uncomfortable for a Muslim to um, to wear uh, you know like a hijab or something in in certain cultures where it's you know f I don't right. know uh, offends people but but yeah Christians kind of have this this golden ticket to like you know wear the uh, very religious paraphernalia paraphernalia yeah sure. and and now I know I can I could get a bad religion you know cross with the with the line through a tattoo to my forehead and that's <laughs> i can do that but i i think i'm gonna have a tr trouble keeping jobs and and making friends i mean it would be it, problematic it would, yeah it would be it would be an least. issue so I, if i get your meaning on christian privilege i think that's one thing I, I have a i have a darwin um fish on my car uh, i have a flying spaghetti monster logo which really just is the f s uh M. M just on the you know so it, if you don't know what flying spaghetti monster is then you know you you're not going to be offended by that which is kind of a uh, i'm guessing dread pirates um, grabbing grabbing his under the radar type thing. yes yeah i have that 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 on my car yep exactly mm -hmm. and then um so i you know i i'm i'm proud of those things but you know darwin's kind of a science thing and, and again if you don't know the flying spaghetti monster you're not going to offend anyone but i would i would I would feel uncomfortable having a cross with the line through it. Like the Bad Religion logo, one of my favorite bands, 
um, I would I would not feel comfortable doing that. And I feel like I don't have that same privilege. I feel you well, on instead that. Of, instead of saying I'm proud of this, you're saying that is bad. And mm-hmm. it, it's an offensive kind of thing when you're mm-hmm. talking to members of that group. I actually put a American Atheist logo on the back of my car. And um, I'm good friends with Nick Fish. I'm good friends with the, 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 the organization. But the thing is, I was worried the first day I put it on overnight if I was going to have like key marks and mm-hmm, stuff like that mm-hmm. on my car. Because I was just like, do, yeah. is anyone going to recognize what this is? Because I don't, I, this is my only car and I love my car. Mm-hmm. Should I do this? Should I shouldn't do this? And I feel like Christians don't have to go through as many apprehensions when they, when they promote themselves so publicly. Yeah. Uh, Gary, what do you think mm-hmm. of the idea of secular privilege? Do you think that's concerning? Secular privilege? Yeah. Like, I, I can, Is there such a hear, thing? <laughs> no. Whoa, whoa. I, hear, I immediately hear the Christian in my head, the, Christ, the former Christian that I was, being like, well, you talk about Christian privilege, that's right, but what about judicial system that says, hey, listen, our constitution, American constitution, that's like, hey, there's no God in this. Like, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of systems that from a Christian point of view would prove if you had more God in it. And like at best, the biggest, the biggest thing that you have in a judicial court is like just the Bible that you, you quote on, but everything else is secular. So like, don't you think that's more secular privilege than Christian privilege? And if we infuse more understanding and, and Christian morales in society, we wouldn't have to worry about like all these, you know, constitutional amendments that we got and these judicial proceedings that we have that are clearly unbiased. Look outside. Look at you. You're, this is the secular world falling apart right outside. That's your secular privilege right there. Check the news. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, oh, that's, that's a tough one. Larry, you got a weird look. I'm, I'm going to have to think about that. I'm, I'm the audience here. I, I would <laughs> like to hear more about that. Yeah, I'd like to hear more about secular privilege. I, I like it. Ty, you got uh, muted. The longer you know Larry, the more you'll realize that that's his pose of, I want to say something. No. <laughs> Not at this point. <laughs> that's his, okay. oh, uh, I can't wait to say uh, something right the now. The thing I'd like to say is that <laughs> that's our starting point as a society. That's our starting point. That's our bedrock. That's where we work from. Anything above uh, obvious reality needs to be proven with evidence, and uh, religion makes all kinds of cl- claims uh, when they're passing their laws and stuff that, you know, it's based on the Bible that is full of claims uh, without any real evidence. Uh, so we need to start with secular uh, society and build from that if we're going to do anything. So that's the foundation. That's the bedrock. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, to, to speak to that now, thinking about it, th- I mean, that is essentially one of the objects of pastafarianism is to really bring it to the top of mind here that, um, a lot of the Christian privilege or Muslim pri- whatever the privilege is, is an addition to the foundation of right. secularism, which is the basis for our civilization, right? Right. I think, think, think of this. Uh, many of the hospitals you see out there, like St. Mary's or Baptist Hospital or something, uh, the, the religions don't fund the entire hospital. They they pay them certain stipend or whatever to be able to put their name on that hospital. Mm-hmm. Now, if they stopped paying that stipend, they would remove their name. They would continue being a secular hospital. Right. It's the underlying bedrock of, of the organization, just like we have an underlying bedrock of society. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, it concerns me a little bit that we have Christian hospitals, because then what happens if we start having Christian police departments you know, Christian judicial, like these are public community services, right? They should be for the entire public. And there are churches in uh, in Alabama now that have their own police department. What? Get out of here. No way. Are you serious? Uh, Oh no, that's really bad. We need to stop that. All right. I got to go to. I agree. (laughs) They don't have their own police department, but they have their own policing force. That's yeah, still was, bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's still so bad. Like, oh, geez. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, I mean, yeah. there are malls that have their own security, but still that's bad. Yeah, I was just going to make one comment here is that uh, just two houses from me is uh, one of the local Christian uh, pastors or preachers. And it's interesting that um, he's currently getting some accolades for um, organizing uh, sandbag sandbagging efforts uh, for the local, you know, because we're dealing with the freshette. Um, but I, I just think it's kind of interesting that if a flood is an act of God and you have a preacher organizing people to 
you know, build defenses against an act of God. What the heck is really going on here? Let's get, let's talk about <laughs> lightning rods on top of churches. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Same thing. I think yeah. this is going to sound really, really bad. I am in a cheeky mood, so please forgive me. And, and JW always corrects me on jokes that are too, too wild. But oh, I think what we've on. learned from coronavirus is that thoughts and prayers don't really do much in terms of like healing people or the sick or getting people into better situations. It's through the work of a lot of people trying to properly yes. educate the community build resources that people can use and then work really hard in terrible environments to keep people well or is what's keeping this fabric of a community together. And we need to be aware of that. JW, hey, Ty, yo. Not, if they didn't shut down the churches, the thoughts and prayers would work. See? <laughs> <laughs> the point. I mean the other day, like, it said, like, if you, you know, you closed the churches for two and a half months and look what happened to the world. Oh, man. <laughs> I rolled my eyes all the way to the back of my skull. Guys, we got like a couple of minutes left in the show. Um, where I'm going to post where everyone's links are. You can see any of our past videos. This is like a, a well-known group already. Um, cool. Larry, why don't you let us out? And then if we got more to talk about, we'll put it in like extended and I'll post that separately. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio, RNWZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, as And if you'd like to listen to our other shows, go to digitalfreethought.com, click on the podcast link. You can also find our videos on uh, Let's Chat, dot, uh, well, Let's Chat Let's which chat is on, on YouTube. 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 And I, my channel on YouTube is just Larry Rhodes, Larry S. Rhodes. Um, we're available, our podcasts are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, Podcast.com, iHeart, as well as digitalfreethought.com. And I'd like to remind everybody at the end of the show that everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't worry about it and enjoy your life. We'll see you next Wednesday, 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM. In the Simply Oscar. best. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Stay rational. Yeah.